Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna talk about layer stamping and also look at the different types of layering stamps you might have in your stash or that are available. Now, if you're not sure what layering stamps are, they're basically stamp sets that you um, layer one image on top of another to build almost a photorealistic stamp in some um, cases or just kind of a multicolored stamp in others. It's a, it's a fun way of working and these stamps have become very popular lately, although they're not new. Now, what brought this video on was I showed a couple of stamp sets that I picked up. These are by American Crafts, which is a huge um, craft company here in the United States. Over the years, they have purchased so many independent companies, and um, so they have a humongous selection of different papers and stamps and mixed media things that they carry, and they also end up being in most of your big box stores. So um, a lot of the stamps you're going to find under different brands in um, in your big box stores like Michael's, Joann's, Hobby Lobby, places like that are going to be from American Crafts. And because they're such a big company, they can have things made overseas in bulk and it brings the price way down. So I picked up these stamps for $4.19 a piece last week and I just couldn't resist. I'm like, they're really pretty. I'm really curious as to how they stamp. And I thought it would also be a good teachable lesson to um, kind of explain how to use different types of stamps differently for the best results. Because I know $25 stamp sets are not in everyone's budget and also ordering online isn't for everyone. So these two stamps here, I decided to try out with um, with both dye ink and pigment ink. So the top examples I did with dye ink, and on this one, my ink pad skipped a little bit, so I used a just a, my clear blending marker just to pull some ink over. It did mar the surface of my cardstock, so I've got a little bit of an issue there, but um, but not too bad. But then you can see with pigment ink how I get a much crisper, more rich design and all my layers look really good. So that's my first tip. If you're using less expensive silicone stamps, use pigment ink. Um, so you may be thinking, well, Lindsay, I have so much dye ink already. Maybe I, you know, I have to buy pigment ink too. Well, if you already have a lot of dye ink, you might want to stick with the type of stamp that's going to respond better than the, better to the dye ink, even if you have to pay a little bit more for them. It just depends on what you have for ink or what you plan on on um, buying. Now this one I did with a dye ink and I think it stamped really beautifully. I can see some of the texture of the ink pad but that's not uncommon with any type of stamp and I think it worked pretty well. I also have to say that these stamps were very easy to line up so if you see those in your big box store and you're curious about them I would recommend them. I think they're pretty decent. Now the only downside was that um, I did have kind of like a little bit of a bubble or a wrinkle or something in the base layer so it was a little difficult. In fact, I did end up kind of re-stamping over that and I stamped all these with blocks. I didn't use a, uh, I don't have a stamp positioning tool. I do have one that my friend made me out of a CD case that I will use if I'm mass producing, but I just like to grab a block and stamp. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can kind of see that. This one has a has a bubble in it, a flaw in the stamp, and that's, that's kind of common. This isn't part of the design, it's just kind of like, um, it's like a part that's been like that should be solid and you can see there's like a, it's almost like a bubble was in the mold when they poured the silicone. Now silicone stamps are extremely bendable and flexible. They're a little bit more so than your photopolymer stamps and um, your photopolymer stamps stick a lot better than the clear silicone ones. So you might get into a situation where your stamps are not sticking to your blocks anymore. In that case, what you want to do is wash your stamps with soapy water. You may have some embossing powder or dust or something on them, ink that's keeping them from sticking, and then wash your stamp mounts with um, with alcohol, and that will help. Or I know a lot of people don't use like to use alcohol on their stamp mounts. I do. I haven't noticed a problem, but just buyer beware. You know, washer beware, I should say. And another tip that I found with any of these uh, clear layering stamps, even the more expensive one, using a thin piece of plexiglass as a stamping block will work a lot better than using um, a hard, rigid stamping block. And this is actually one of those photo frames that usually has like a little magnet on the back to put on your refrigerator. And this works great for these larger stamps because you can you can really make sure you press everywhere. So if you do have a stamp like this, which kind of almost seems like it has like a wrinkle or a little bubble in it, it doesn't seem to be completely flat and uniform. It doesn't matter because that little bit of flex um, in this like photo frame piece of plexiglass kind of um, makes up for that. And I think also if you were using a stamp positioner, I think those might be a little more flexible, so you might be able to push down. I'm not sure. You can let me know in the comments below whether this, whether like those stamp positioning tools are flexible or if they're rigid. Um, but that could help you push it push it down. Now I have to say these were very easy to line up. 
Um, and I would recommend them. $4.19, absolutely. Um, yeah, I did have a little imperfection on that stamp, but it's not enough for me to even bother with returning because if I return the stamp, they're just going to, you know, probably throw it away or send it back to the manufacturer. And it's just going to go to waste and I can make this work. So, um, so yeah, I'm not going to return it. I don't want to contribute to more waste. But um, easy to line up. I definitely would recommend if you are going to be using silicone stamps that you consider using a dye-based ink. So for these bottom two examples here, I used VersaFine Clear ink. That's one of my favorite, that's probably my favorite pigment ink. You get a nice solid image. They've got a nice vivid bright color palette. I love the color palette. Um, of course I picked a color that's not really <laughs> really vibrant but um, layered up really well and another advantage to using the pigment ink not only can you use it on your any of your cheaper stamps the stamps you picked up at the dollar store the stamps you picked up at any of the big box stores that were like on sale for five bucks or six bucks it's gonna work great with this ink the other cool thing is after I was layering all these stamps I could actually heat emboss this with like clear embossing powder and have like a glossy professional looking uh, embellishment so um, these are I'm trying to think. I think these are a couple dollars more than like a similar size die pad, but if you're going to be using a lot of silicone stamps or that's what you already have, it's definitely um, worth investing in. Now, there used to be a company called Colorbox that would actually do like minis. It would have like a... Um, it would be like one big pad and you could pull out the little mini pads and they're not around anymore but you can also buy pigment inks in small mini size pads like my dye inks are here. So that's something you can consider too if you want to get a bunch of colors for less cost per color. So that's something to consider. Now I tend to have more dye based inks though. Even though I have the full range of the Versify and Claire, there's not as much variety in pigment inks as there are dye inks. So um, I use these Memento uh, do drop inks. I use Stampin' Up ink pads, which I refill. I also refill my mementos. You just buy the little bottles of ink. Um, and it can seem kind of, kind of expensive, but it's really, it's really worthwhile. It saves you a lot of money over buying the pad again. And I have a variety of Gina K inks, which I really like, some Altenew inks. My Altenew cubes always felt a little dry to me. I prefer the Gina K and the Hero Arts to the Altenew, but, um, but you know, Altenew does make good inks. I think maybe just these, these little cubes didn't hold enough. Um, but yeah, and, and all of these dye inks will work interchangeably with each other, so you don't have to have a full line of any one brand. If you see a good sale on Memento, you could buy the Memento and then buy some of the other pads to fill in. So, um, you know, you'll want to have some big pads like a black, a brown. If you like to do a lot of Christmas stamping and you're going to be using that pad over and over and over again, maybe like reds or greens or your favorite color, whatever you're really going for. Some um, stampers like to have like a really, really pale gray so they could Copic color or watercolor over it and not see the lines. I like to see the lines myself, but you know, it's completely up to you what you like. So um, like I mentioned, dye inks up here, pigment inks down here. Now, uh, the, the biggest benefit to the silicone stamps is the price and the size of the stamp. Often they can make silicone stamps in larger sizes than they can the photopolymer, both due to cost and due to that, the fact that these are so kind of stretchable and bendable and, um, and very resilient. Uh, they don't hold ink quite as well, but um, but they are very affordable. And uh, other cons, the ink may bead up, like I mentioned. If you're dealing with an outline stamp, I don't think that's a big deal. Like if you're looking at two flowers, for instance, and you're seeing one outline flower that is a silicone stamp for like five dollars and you're seeing another one that's a photopolymer stamp for you know twenty dollars if it's just an outline i would go with a cheaper one if you like the designs the same but if it's something that's a layering stamp you might want to go with a higher quality one if um if it's got a lot of layers and a lot of solid area it's a solid area you want to really be concerned with with the cheaper silicone stamps because sometimes they have a hard time didn't have a lot of trouble with those american crafts ones which was great but i just wanted to let you know that for future now if you do have one of these stamp sets it has like the really big solid area and by solid area i mean an area like this where you've got this really big field of rubber that's stamping if you have something where the ink is beating up, you can try taking just a regular rolled eraser and erasing over it, and then I wipe it with a, with like a damp rag and then ink it up and stamp it. And if that doesn't do the trick, you can gently scuff it with a nail file, uh, like an emery board, sandpapery type. Um, that's kind of the last resort, but I find that that will take care of stamps that are not behaving um, if the eraser doesn't work. So that's something else you can choose. And um, since these are pretty resilient, you can use uh, pretty much anything to stamp with and pretty much anything to clean. And you can't use every type of ink with a photopolymer stamp. So um, 
I just want to kind of put that out for you. Um, I think silicone is pretty, uh, is pretty resilient. Now, um, like I mentioned, the downside is because these are mass produced and they are less expensive, a lot of times you'll find flaws. Like I did find a couple flaws in some of my stamps I got at the Dollar Tree and I did find, I have found creases um, in stamps before, and but I have in photopolymer too, so it's not just these uh, inexpensive ones. I kind of let it go on the inexpensive ones um, and make it work, but that's just something to consider. You know, inspect your stamps after you buy them and make sure that they um, they work well. But I had no qualms with these. I think that's beautiful, and I think that would be so pretty on a Mother's Day card. But I wanted to show you those because I just bought them in there. I think they're new to the market in case anybody else sees them and was curious. So the next type of clear stamp is um, a photopolymer stamp. And here is an example of a photopolymer stamp set. Altenew makes gorgeous layering stamps. I have a few of their sets. I also have some sets by the ton. And I have some sets from, by uh, Impression Obsession. And they are beautiful stamps. They line up really, they line up pretty easily. Like for this one, I did my big outline first and then I did that one, that one, and that one. So the, uh, the advantages are that you can use any dye-based ink or any pigment ink. You don't want to use solvent inks on these. You could use solvent inks on the silicone, but solvent inks could break down the, uh, the material. Um, you also don't want to store this in sunlight. So if you have open bins of stamps on your shelf and you've got a window nearby, I really wouldn't recommend that. I store all my stamps in binders. I'll show you right here, actually. I have one of my stamp binders. I have my, my floral layering stamp binder right here. So I store my, um, this is some other pretty alt new sets. Look at how many layers. Oh my gosh, it's a little overwhelming. There's so many layers. Um, I just keep my uh, my stamp sets in here so I can flip through and it protects them from any of my UV lights, my, um, not UV lights, but my fluorescent lights, which I think could also damage the stamps. Uh, they will yellow if they're exposed to light, so that's something to consider. And um, you also, another, um, let's see, we're talking about the, we're talking about the, um, we're talking about the benefits or the disadvantages. Well, we'll talk about all of them together. Um, you can find a humongous variety in the amount of layering stamps that are available because they're so um, they're so popular right now. So like the Ton, Altenew, Kitchen Sink, um, Impression Obsession, they all have lots of photopolymer um, rubber stamps that are built for layering and they get extremely detailed. I know the, the Kitchen Sink stamps, which I don't have any, they have a really cute, they have some really nice berries. Um, and they, oh, Hero Arts also has beautiful layering stamps. Those are all high quality photopolymer, more expensive. Um, they do tend to yellow and stain with your inks a lot more than silicone stamps because they're more porous. They grab that ink. That's why they stamp so well, but they do stain. I know that bothers some people. It doesn't bother me, but, um, uh, but there it is. Also, most of these independent companies offering photopolymer stamps also have dyes available. So that means you can um, you could stamp and then die cut your images, or you could die cut then stamp. There's a couple excellent videos on YouTube on layering stamps, and uh, there's one there's a couple by Jennifer McGuire and there's one by Justine Hovey, and they show how you can die cut first and then stamp, and um, they get beautiful results. Uh, and they're using a stamping tool, so you need one of those um, hinge stamping platforms for those techniques. But they do get a like a perfect result with them. Um, I'm more of a uh, artsy freewheeling. I want to use my stamp blocks. I don't want to be fussing around with anything complicated. And so I'm not so picky about precision. So I also usually don't bother with the dies because the chances of my dies lining up perfectly with what I've stamped would be very, very slim. So, but there are dies available and I know that's really important to a lot of crafters. So, um, so that's an option. The downside is price. You know, this is like $24 versus this, which was $4.19. So, I mean, that's a, that's a big difference. You're going to find more variety though. If you can think of any type of flower, you're probably going to be able to find it in a clear stamp set that's photopolymer. So you do get a little bit more customization and you more options for unique products that you wouldn't find in like your local big box store. They line up really well. They hold the ink really well. You can use, um, those two, well, I told you the dye and the pigment ink. And uh, and yeah, they're wonderful. They're wonderful stamps. Now, uh, the other option, which is was the first type that came around, were the rubber stamps. So if you've been stamping for a long time, like I have, you've probably heard the term two-step stampin' before. Stampin' Up came up with a, um, they were back, back in the day with the woodblock stamps, they would sell sets that had um, like a base image and then like an outline and you would stamp the, uh, the base image and you stamp the outline or vice versa, and you would make these kind of fun, fresh, um, 
artsy stamps that have kind of like that has a couple layers and they were really cute people really liked them they made them big so you could stamp them on walls if you wanted to and um that's kind of i think where the layering stamps came from was those old two-step stamping um stamps from stamping up and then um and i still have a bunch of mine like wood block ones i love them they're so fun to stamp on an envelope i'm not that I, I like the wonkiness of them personally. Um, so when I went to my first stamp show and I discovered Rubbernecker, I was in love. So I actually have quite a little selection of Rubbernecker flowers. Um, they are so fun. I love how they almost look like watercolors. And this was actually their watercolor collection. And they were, they are just, they're just so fun and easy. Nothing has to be lined up perfectly. You can use, um, these are rubber stamps, so you can use solvent ink if I wanted to. I don't really care for solvent ink, but you could use solvent ink, dye ink, pigment ink, markers, uh, like your, um, like I use these markers here to stamp these images. They all, everything works good on rubber stamps, and they're also not going to turn yellow on you. They're not going to be affected. I mean, I wouldn't put them in direct sunlight because that's not great for rubber, but they're definitely a lot more resilient. They're longer lasting, and um, and I just, I just like that kind of artsy aesthetic, personally. I like that I don't have to have everything perfectly lined up for it to look good. Um, I feel like sometimes if you don't have these lined up really well, like mine aren't perfect, but I feel like if you don't have them lined up really well, then you've got to toss it because you can't salvage it. It'll, it clearly looks like it's wrong. Whereas something like this, it can be a little off. It's still cute. I would totally use that on a bookmark or a tag or a card. Um, to me, I like that. So that's just a, um, a style choice, but you can, you know, you can do whatever you like. So I thought I would show a couple examples of how to use these different products because they're kind of fun. And, um, and yeah, uh, let's see the, uh, oh, I did want to recommend, I did want to let you know that rubber necker now has clear stamps. I'm not sure if they even have these rubber ones anymore, but I just wanted to mention this because I know not everybody started stamping this year and don't, you know, don't have wood block stamps or don't have rubber stamps. A lot of us still use rubber stamps and have these in our collection still and have the old Stampin' Up! Woodblock rubber stamps in our collection. And I think it's important to know the versatility of all these stamps. Rubber is still the most versatile stamp. Now, if you wanted to line these up perfectly, like, you know, a uh, clear stamp, you can do that. You just need to use like a stamp -a jig which is like a little corner that you would stamp on a you know, on a uh, clear piece and then like line it up. But, uh, but you don't have to. You can... Um, you know, you can, you can stamp it. It's, it's, uh, it's not bad at all. So, um, yeah, why don't we do a few little examples? I'm going to get, I'm going to clean up and get my stuff together. We'll do a couple examples just to show you the, some differences and some techniques. I thought it would be fun to use this set by Rubbernecker. It's got quite a few layers. It's got an outline layer and then three, uh, colored layers to put on top. These you can see are designed to look kind of like a watercolor and I love how it doesn't have to line up perfectly to look good. And it's not even really designed to line up perfectly, which I, I think is really fun. So for your outline, you want to have a nice black ink. You can use any black ink you like, but if I want a really crisp image, I will usually opt for a pigment ink. And I really like the VersaFine Claire. I also like the VersaFine, the normal VersaFine, and also Altenew's Obsidian Black. I really like all three of those black ink pads. Now you want to make sure you ink up the entire stamp because lining this up again is not going to be very easy when you're using a block. Um, so some people like to use the stamp positioners because then you can keep stamping in the same place until you get a really good impression. But you shouldn't need to if you uh, ink up your stamp well and then you um, you know, just kind of press it straight down. I'm working on a piece of fun foam here. I had a stamping mat, but for some reason it's up in my daughter Lila's room. I don't know if she thought it was a jewelry making uh, product, but she uses it for something. And then I'm just going to give it some just gentle pressure. And I want to make sure that everything has gotten pressure. And I also give my ink plenty, time, plenty of time to transfer from the rubber to the paper. So a lot of times with the stamp positioners, I see people like close it and lift it up like like that. That's not really enough time for things to transfer. So this is kind of an old school technique, but I really think it bears repeating. And there I got a beautiful impression. I don't need to restamp it. It's there. It's fine. Um, this is a very fine line image. So um, so there you go. If you wanted to, you could heat emboss this and get a little shine on that outline if you want to. Or you could also heat set it if you're worried that the ink might smudge because this does take a little bit longer to dry than your dye base ink. But in all honesty, and the amount of time it's going to take you to get your next layer ready, um, 
you know, you're going to, uh, it'll be dry. So this is a tip that I learned from the owner of Rubbernecker and he was doing a demo in his booth. And that's one of the things I really like about going to stamp shows is that you get to see those sorts of things. And what he said to do was um, to lay down the layer over the index sheet on your, um, on your package and it will give you a good idea of where that stamp needs to be because you can't see through it. And um, now they offer a clear stamp, so I'm not sure if you can still get these rubber ones, but um, they are beautiful. I'm just gonna like make that parallel with, just, just eyeballing it here to make sure that I have it, how it's going to be. Um, so that's the nice thing about going to a stamp show is that you get to see things being used. So I'm gonna start off with my lightest tone and I'm just gonna ink it up. Now something I'll do sometimes, now this does have a, a like a, oh, what do you wanna call it? Like a half dot, half tone texture to it. So it kinda takes away some of the texture from your ink pad, which I really like, cause you can really see that ink pad texture on clear stamps, especially the photopolymer one, cause they, cause they capture, you know, print so well, they'll capture the print of your, um, they'll capture the print of your ink pad. I'm just gonna set that like that and I'm gonna give plenty of time for this ink to transfer. So I really like going to stamp shows and seeing the demos because they're the ones that design their product. They can tell you how it's gonna look. Now I can see, I can see like a little bit of red line here, a little bit of red line there. So I know I'm not gonna be perfectly within the lines, but that's all right. Cause it's still gonna give me that really cute look. You wanna make sure you give it a good press, make sure that everything makes contact. That's why I like the flexible blocks for um, larger stamps. And then we're just gonna lift it up. I think that's pretty cute. All right, we're gonna do, uh, I'm just gonna, I'll clean all these after. I'll save you the gory details. And so then my next color, I'm just gonna hold it over where I see that color on my index sheet. I'm gonna lift it up with my stamp positioner and I'm gonna bring it over. So I just kinda like eyeball it. Now I'm gonna use my next darker color. This is, um, I like I'm using three different brands. I'm using Gina K, I'm using um, Hero Arts, I'm using, uh, stamping up, so really, you know, dye inks will go with dye inks, pigment inks with pigment inks, and so on and so forth. Now, if I wanted to get fancy, I could grab like a marker, now this one's gonna be pretty close in color, and I could add some little, like, colors to it. You don't have to, but uh, you can also do that. That's what I did on, that's what I did on that flower, that flower, and that flower, just kind of pretty. You can also use a couple ink pads at once. Now, since I've been gabbing, I'm gonna breathe on that ink to re-moisten it. And I'm just gonna kind of eyeball it. Now, I love this because I don't have to put my head right in front of the camera to like look right down on all these, which is really nice. Give it time to transfer. And there we go. I just love the look of this. I know it's not gonna be everybody's cup of tea, but I just think it's so pretty. Um, and then for this one, all you gotta do is just line it up on your index sheet, see how it looks. This is more just like the centers. So you could be real bold and you could do that in black if you wanted to. I'm gonna go with a really dark red called Red Royale from Hero Arts. And I'll tell you what, I mean the mementos, I think I have, I don't have all the mementos, but I have almost all of them. Um, and I have almost all the, G, the Gina K, but honestly, if I see like a set of four cubes on sale at like uh, Michael's or something, Joanne's, I will grab them, why not, you know? I love to have variety. I mean, I don't need any more now, but when I was getting started, I mean. Give it a good push, give it time, don't rush it. Now the stamp positioner tools may be quite handy if you have a shake or a tremor or something in your hands because it will give you a little more time. Uh, you could hold it and you don't have to worry about things jiggling like you might if you're holding a stamp block. So by no means do I want to say don't get those tools. I just want to say, you know, get, get the things that make sense for you. And I'm just gonna use my marker to fill in the stems. Now let's say you're like, oh, Lindsay, you know, I don't think I like that artsy fartsy look. What can I do? Cause I don't want to waste this thing that I've stamped, but you know, it's just not me. I don't like it. So what you can do is you can use a marker and you can fill in and let's see, I'm going to swatch this one on a scrap and just see, that's a little too dark. Let me find a lighter pink and we can add a little bit of lighter pink ink there and uh, 
and see how that looks. So this one's a nice light one and it's a, oh, it's not really that, that much different. Now I can go in and I can fill in. So if I decide that, well, that's a little too artsy fartsy for me, I'm just going to go in and add a layer. And I'm using a real brush pen here. There's lots of different makers. This happens to be a Zig, but I've used the um, Genuine Crafts. I've used the Arteza. I've used the Ohuhu. I've used the Color It. They're all very good. So you can go in and you can fill in a little bit if you're not crazy about that. What I'd recommend is you kind of do a whole petal at a time. That way you don't end up with any uh, weirdness. This one might be a little too neon, but I think, actually think it's cute. And you could do some spatter on this or you could use a spattering stamp or anything like that that you like. But you know, you can pull in different techniques and you can have it however you like. Um, I also like that most of these stamps you get have sayings. So it's kind of fun because you can just buy one stamp set and you can make a whole, a whole card out of it. So there's how to do the rubber ones. I like this <laughs> method because it's not so precise. <clears throat> Plus I love how it looks like watercolor and I'm a watercolor painter. So it just is kind of my aesthetic, I guess, as the kids would say. So the next thing I want to show you how to do is to do use the photopolymers. And I've got a stamp set that I'm absolutely crazy about. And I purchased it a couple years ago. It's by Impression Obsession. I think Dina Cowell uh, designed this one. Yep, Dina Cowell. She's a actually a very talented color pencil artist. Um, and I just love these macarons. And I love all the little sayings here because there is, you know, you could use these for a birthday, but I feel like you could use these for any occasion. And I also thought this would be a really fun slimline card because I'd seen somebody else make a slimline card and it was like, it was, the stamp was a stack of macarons. And I was like, well, I have a macaron stamp so I could just do this just like that. So what I'm going to do is actually pull my colors and then, um, and then I'll be right back so we can stamp it together. That will save us a little bit of time. All right, I decided to do rainbow macarons. So I pulled like a rainbow version of six different colors. As you can see, mixing and matching my dye inks, it's totally fine to do that. And I've got a smaller stamp block because this is a small stamp and I don't think I'll have any issues with, um, uh, with it. So there we go. Now the first thing I'm actually going to do is stamp it on a little bit of post-it tape because I'm going to want a mask. So let's just make our mask right off the bat. I'll stamp it with a darker color because I want to make sure I can see it to cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect for this and it's post-it tape so I don't have to um, clean that up. I don't have to uh, be mindful of the edges. So, Also, I wanted a, um, a firm block so I can use my stamp scrubber there. My homemade stamp scrubber. This is made with a baby wipes box and a um, some paint pad edgers from the hardware store. <laughs> oh, I love to save money. All right, so we're just going to cut this out and whenever I make a mask I save it because it will be really handy the next time you make cards and what I do is I just keep it right like I'll just stick this right to the index sheet of my like the backing sheet of my stamp set and I keep these in page protectors in my binder like I showed you earlier because that just that for me works really well I know a lot of people like to use the bins and that's fine but I would urge you if you have clear stamps to make sure those bins are like in cupboards so the light's not going to get to them uh, rather than having them on, open, on an open shelf where your fluorescent lights are getting to them and and all of that all right so um now I want you to say something before you start your project and I want you to say this it's okay not to be perfect it's okay if things are a little wonky it's okay if my card doesn't look like Pinterest because you know what if you want to have a perfect like any of these images absolutely perfect you could probably find a clip art for it online right for free or for cheap I can buy clip art if I want to have a perfect image um, I am stamping because I love to stamp I love the handmade look of it so um, so keep that in mind so again giving it a chance to transfer I can't really tell looking down through whether I got a good impression or not but I think I've made good contact yep that looks good so the way I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to work my way through so I don't have to keep um, so I don't have to keep 
getting new stamps and I don't get confused basically because it can get kind of confusing to to do these and I'm flipping over my ink pad as I after I use it so I know that I've used that color and that shade so I'm gonna start I'm starting off with all my lights I'm going on to my orange there's also I bought um, a couple other stamp sets when I bought this from Impression Obsession, I'll try to remember to link everything up. Um, oh, we want to put our mask down. Um, I bought one that was like ice cream sundae that was so cute. I think that I think all three of them were designed by Dina Cowell. I'm actually gonna like tip them each one so they're a little bit off. Um, oh, you know what I should do? I should make a little note. Did I stamp them the same way? I'm gonna put a little. Um, dot in the upper left hand corner so I'll know what side just so that when I line everything up I'll know that I'm you know I'm putting them all down the same way um and they were all designed by Dina Cowell I think and I got an ice cream like one of those swirly like uh, twist ice creams and a um and an ice cream sundae stamp and those are so they're so cute they take a while to make a card with. That's the only downside, but man, are they cute. I'm thinking, remember when I told you that like you will see the texture from your stamp pad on these uh, high quality photopolymers? That's the texture you're seeing there. I think by the time the uh, ink dries, it's not really gonna be noticeable. So keep that in mind. Um, also, when you put your, when you put your stamp down, uh, you put your mask down, you wanna like have it so it's just a smidgen in um, so you don't get a halo. So like when I put this mask down, I'm going to have it just so I can see a, just a hint of the yellow so that I know it's going to, I'm not going to have a halo, it's going to overlap. So you just want to see just like, just like a smidgen of the other color. I probably could have done this on regular paper because I've lost all the sticky from putting that directly on a, a stamped area, but that's fine. It'll dry out. And now we're going to green. Gee, I wonder if I'm gonna need to add another color. I can always trim my, I can always trim this down. I should trim the video down. That's what I should trim down. This is gonna be a long one. I can do a chocolate one in the end, I suppose. Hope I clean that stamp good. That red stains. Yeah, this is the thing you have to kind of be concerned with with these stamps is that they do stain. The photopolymer ones especially stain a lot more than the silicone ones. So it can be a little, confusing when you're looking down through you're seeing the previous color which may may make you think oh did I wash that stamp well enough I'm going to go with this blue I also wear old pants when you stamp so you can like wipe your <laughs> dry your stamp off and then you don't have to worry about uh don't have to worry about getting like ink stains on your pants. Oh man, you know what? And I'm like rubbing off, I should use a Sharpie to put that, to put that mark on there because I've, I just keep, uh, I used a Micron, but apparently I need to put a sticker there or something. And I just want to keep it upright because when I when I go to do my layers, it's fairly symmetrical, so I don't think it would be that big of a deal, especially with the way that I'm as picky as I am, which is not very. Um, I'm wondering if maybe I could do a. I think I need. I want to get another. Well, actually, if I do two more, then I have room for a sentiment. Hmm. Or do I want a bright blue? Maybe I'll do. Yeah, maybe I'll do a blue or blue. Let's see. And then I'll do the purple. So I've got. These gorgeous blues, and I got summer sky, and I'm gonna need something that's kind of in between. Oh, this will work. There we go. Yeah, let's do that. Did I wash that one? Yes. Don't test your stamps with your fingers, because then you're just gonna you're asking for trouble. This poor stamp set, the the lid got inked like ink leaked on it, so I had to make my own <laughs> my own label. It's so sad. You are not watching a professional operation here. <laughs> Can't even tell what side's up on my stamp. Oh boy. Oh, that's a nice color though. And now we'll do purple. We still have room for a sentiment. Maybe I'll do a chocolate one on the end. I don't know. That's a lot of macarons. This is gonna, we're gonna be here all day. We'll have to edit some of this out. I mean, seriously. 
Yeah, it's like, wait for it. This is going to be really amazing. <laughs> See, I told you. This is going to, this is this. Actually, I don't know if I told you. Um, the reason why I don't do too much stamp layering is because it takes a long time. <laughs> a chocolate one because now it just seems like way too far on one side okay so let's see what do we got for browns oh this is let's see I got lots of nice browns um yeah I got quite a few lovely browns let's see we've got rich cocoa that can be our dark we've got uh toffee crunch and desert I think desert sand is the lightest um Warm cocoa, rich cocoa. I think these three might work. If not, I do have what's this? This one, the craft, might work for one of them. So I'll just put that one to the side. Let's do. Did I wash that? I don't even know. So confused. All right, let's do. What's this one called? Oh gosh, I can't read that. I think that's faded. And see, you know, that's that's just proof. I keep my um. Uh, desert sand. I keep my ink pads. I keep them for years and years. I've probably had these for, I don't know, many years, probably like eight or ten. I don't know. Um, but I keep them and I just re-ink them. So yeah, they look a little, they look a little, you know, used, but they are. So, um, gosh, what other color could I do? Because I really feel like I would like something. Oh, kind of like, well, I think I'll just put a sentiment there because I can't think of another what other color I would put in that range. All right, so what I'm going to do now because I don't want to get confused, I'm going to wash my stamp and I'm going to put it back on my stamp sheet. That's where you gotta you really need to be aware of your stamps when you're doing this because if you lose one of the layers from your layering set, you're going to be very sad because you're not going to be able to make that image. It's not like if you lose a like a little flower out of a stamp set, then well that's it's a bummer, but you know it's uh, it's not the end of the world. It's a real bummer when you do that with your um, with your stamp sets, and I really should have paid attention. Okay, so well, I just want the highlight on the top. That's on why I made. That's gonna be the top because I'm gonna have a sentiment on the bottom. Good grief! Where's my dot? There's my dot. <laughs> Anyone still watching? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go to our next color. So we have we have scale of light to dark. So we did light. Let's say light is number one. Now we're doing all of our number twos in the uh, in the color scheme. This is gonna be our. We did a highlight layer. This is gonna be our. That doesn't look evenly inked. Oh, by the way, first time you use a stamp set, it's a good idea to wash them. Like just like use your stamp scrubber, or whatever you have your whatever your towel rag. I have to put my head over this thing to line it up right. Um, it's going to be tricky because we're using pastel tones, so uh, yeah, you want to wash your, your stamps to remove any manufacturing grease. It's not perfect, but it's fine. And that will that will make your, your ink stamp good. Or just do a test stamp. You can ink it up and stamp it on scrap paper. A lot of times that will also take away any of the grease. Where is my mask? Seriously, I've lost my mask. Oh, come on. All right, guys, I gotta find my mask because if I don't, then I'm gonna have problems. So I'll find my little mask or I'll make a new one and we'll be right back. Well, friends, I cut another mask, but I did leave some extra attached to it. So hopefully if I lose it again, I can find it. <laughs> oh, friends, so we're gonna stick that right there. We're gonna ink up with our two level of orange, which is soft cantaloupe. But guys, use whatever brands you have. If you've been stamping for 20 years and you've got all those old Stampin' Up! pads and you've got this and brand and that brand, as long as you keep dye with dye and um, pigment with pigment, you are going to be just fine. Now some pigment inks can be water-based and some can be oil-based, but um, I don't think I've noticed any. Oh no, I did that on the wrong one. Oh crud. Okay, let's see. Hmm. You know my motto. <laughs> no restamping. Okay, what are we gonna do about that? I don't know. Let's see. I had it lined up so good too. 
that's a bummer. That's what you call, that's what we call in the biz, a bummer. But, yeah, what are you going to do? We're going to, we're going to, we're going to keep calm and carry on, friends. So we're going to go back. I'm going to just stamp, um, I'm going to stamp yellow on top of that. <laughs> I don't know. Let's see. Let's see what happens. So I can't uh, stress enough the fact that you should really, if you really want to know about layering stamps, you should be watching someone else. <laughs> hmm. Can't even see where I stamped that. That's ah, fine. We're just gonna pretend that that didn't happen. We're just gonna go on our merry little way, and we're gonna work on the green. I mean, it's like you got a you got a creamsicle ma macaron, and then you've got a mint. You got a cream swiggle, you got a butter rum, and then you got a mint. That's what I'm saying. We all know butter rum is the best flavor of everything. Okay. Hope this one has enough contrast. This doesn't look very dark. And the other thing is, you know, you're gonna make mistakes. You're like, you know, we'll make several mistakes before we're done. That first mistake isn't even gonna show up. You make enough other mistakes, nobody notices the first one. Even with all the safe, the fail safes of like putting my ink pads upside down after I use them, ah, we still have, we still have little boo boos, but you know, it's not like we're in charge of nuclear codes or anything. We're nuclear codes. I always get that wrong. Uh, we're making cards. We're making cards. If anyone wants to give me a hard time about my macaron being the wrong color, then they don't have to be on my card list anymore. They can go pound sand, as my mother would say. Oh, that's a pretty color. There's plenty of contrast there. All right, we'll go to our next color. All right, guys, you see how this is going, right? Why don't we take this back up again when we get to the third layer of colors? Because this, I know this is riveting and all, but I'm going to save these. I'm going to spare you a little bit. All right, we are back with layer number three and stamp number three. And so we are going with our third darkest color. And don't worry if you don't have the perfect, um, the perfect color because I'm actually going to stamp that off to make sure it's, yeah, it looks good. Um, don't worry if you don't have the perfect color because the, you're going to see the other layers through it, so we'll kind of mix the colors together and help them coordinate and match. And I'm just going to lean over because I haven't used the stamp yet today, and it's been a while since I used it at all. Oh, that looks cute. Oh, I love it. Um, we're going to clean it. And we're going to go to the orange. We're going to put our mask... On. Oh, by the way, um, I, I cut a little of the scrap of the masking paper, put that where that dot had been because I'm like, yeah, I'm going to mess up and stamp it upside down. Have my shadow in the wrong spot. This they just require too much thinking. <laughs> the layering stamps require, you know, your full mental capacity. We can't be talking and doing this at the same time. Actually, actually, I don't even need to mask here because we're not even, we're not even, um, excuse my head. We're not even touching that top layer, so that's kind of nice. Well, there we go. And so we're going to go so on and so forth. I'm actually not cleaning my stamp after that one because if it picks up a little of that color, I think it might help where I had kind of boo-booed last layer. Remember that one? Back three years ago when we were on that layer. <laughs> oh, I'm playing with fire. Look at all the stray ink I have on this. I really should clean that off before I stamp this. But I like to live dangerously. Oh man, that and see right there, there's where they get you. That's, you know, you, once you see that, you're like, oh, layering stamps. I want to leave you, but I just, I just can't let you go. That's just too good. When you start seeing that build up and you're like, mm, looking like a photo. It's just too darn tempting to do these. All right. Uh, so we're going to take a pause. I'm going to finish up this row and then we'll come back and we'll do that last layer. 
Oh, so good. Okay, we are at the um, the fourth color. Now there is a fifth layer here, and um, what I'll probably end up doing, I might see if I have another darker version of everything, or I'll just stamp this last layer one more time. So that's something you can do to stretch your 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 ink pads. Another thing you can do to stretch your ink pads is when you're doing that first layer, stamp it. Uh, off on a scrap and then stamp it on your project so you'll get a little bit lighter tone and then use that first color again for your second layer. So there's two different ways to do that. Um, that might have been wise on this with um, because we have such a, a pastel type thing but um, it honestly didn't occur to me. I didn't realize I had so many layers when I started. And that does waste some ink so I mean it's great if you have a limited selection, but um, it is going to waste some ink, so, you know, that's something to think about, I suppose. You could do another card at the same time and have it darker, I don't know. I'm sure you can figure out figure out what to do. You know how to live your life. <laughs> life lessons. Not. Or I could do that last one in brown or something and it would be like chocolate macaron. Sorry for my head in the way. I just don't know how else to do this, really. All right, so I'm just going to go through and do that whole row just like we did before, and then we'll come back and we will think about what we want to do for our final uh, row. Actually, I'll do one more. I don't think I need to clean between orange and caramel. Hopefully, this one's dark enough. If not, I'll have to go with the brown. Let's let's see. Let's just experiment. See, that's I, I like more of a free-flowing approach. <laughs> that works. That's something also you can do, you can like keep your, um, like if you're going from a colors that are related or like you're rainbowing, you've got two that are really close together, um, you don't necessarily have to clean and sometimes it can be helpful if you want to like push a color a certain way, if you want to push a color to be, like if you want that green to be more yellow after you did that lighter layer, not cleaning your stamping, going right into the light green, that might help you get a little bit more of a yellowy green if that's what you want. Um, you just don't want to contaminate your pad so I wouldn't go like into colors that don't, that aren't next to each other, you know what I mean? I wouldn't go with opposing colors or really drastically different in value colors. Ooh, I don't know about this one. Oh, actually, that's like lined up the most perfect of all things I've lined up. <laughs> you never know. Do ya? Some people know. I never know. Boy, this is dark. Is that really the one I had for that? I guess so. Boy, that does look dark. I feel like there should be a color in between. I almost feel like that might be a better color for that shadow. Hmm. I think it is. I'm going to do that. You know, sometimes you're just going to go on the fly. Oh, that's right. I was supposed to be pausing this. Yeah. That's where it's at. Okay. I'm going to flip that over. All right, guys, I need to, uh... well, then again, we've come this far. <laughs> we've only just begun. Our journey of stamping macarons. I don't feel like I need to clean between these two. I feel like I'm playing a twisted game of memory match, I'm flipping everything over. This is purple, right? Oh gosh, yep. That does not feel lined up to me. Oh, but look at that, you never know. That is actually quite lined up. All right, we'll do our dark brown. Actually, I'm gonna have fun making cards with all these like random things that I've stamped because I don't like to let things go to waste. Make tags, make some gift tags or something, you know. It's fun to do that sort of thing. Oh, I hope that one's lined up. Hey, okay, look where we're at so far. I nece I don't necessarily think I need another layer, but since we have it, I think I, look at that. Ah, oh, love it. <laughs> it only took me three and a half hours. <laughs> Never had one lesson. <laughs> yeah, Lindsay, that's painfully obvious. All right, we're gonna do our last layer here. This one, this is so dark. You know, I could probably even do like a gray or something. Um, 
see, I'm putting it there so when I put my block down, I have my little my little sticker in the. Is that right? Yeah, I guess so. Um, I could probably do like a like a gray or something. I have a darker red. I think this one's a little bit darker. I think I might just go for try to find a darker version of each of these colors. Um, like, I think this is darker for that. You know, I think I actually have more, more ink than I realize, I think. And what was this one? That was a, dude. do I have anything darker than that? That's pretty dark. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with this because, or I could use nautical blue. I think that might be dark. That's very close to that. Nautical blue might be a nice shadow for that color, I think. Oh, it's gonna be hard not to get confused. Um, and then for this, I'm gonna use that because I didn't use that one before. For this blue, I think I'll use Paris blue. And then, oh, then we went to purple. I don't know if I have anything darker than elderberry. I think that might be, I think that's my darkest purple. I'm gonna have to stick with that one. Rich cocoa, I think I do have a darker brown. I could use espresso truffle. Hmm, I think that's gonna work. All right, guys, let's rock and roll. So we're gonna start with Red Royale. Some of these are hybrid inks. Uh, I honestly find the hybrid to be very similar, more, more similar associated to a dye than a pigment, although they're supposed to kind of be in between. I am gonna wipe off that little, cause I don't wanna like ruin it this stage of the game. I don't wanna like get a big smudge when I'm this close to finishing this thing. All right, I gotta get my head in the way again. I hope I brushed my hair today. I think I did. I'm pretty sure I brushed my hair. Hmm. Not really that, uh, it's not that like noticeable, but I don't think you really want it to be. I'm not gonna clean off the ink because I think I might want a little bit of that darker color. Good grief, I am over inking big time. Watch out with those lighter layers. And also watch it when you're doing your layering stamp. Sometimes those last layers have like a full base, a full base like um, of the uh, of the ink. See that? I got like a little bit of orange on there. You've got to be careful about that because you can end up getting ink on the base part and then it um, it gets into the, the margin of your stamped image. If you're doing a one layer card, that can be pretty frustrating. If you're doing a... Um, if you're doing when you're going to die cut, it's not that big of a deal, but you're going to watch those the base layer of your stamp. That's the part that sticks to the block. Make sure that you don't have a bunch of. Um, ooh, that's hard. It's getting hard to see through the stamp. Um, so you don't have a bunch of extra ink. You don't want a halo. Huh? I like that. Boy, the, I like that contrast. Maybe I should have used. Maybe I should have went even darker. Well, nautical blue is going to be dark, so that'll be good. I'm only cleaning between stamps if I think that it's gonna bother the ink pad. Ooh, I like that. I feel like that should be darker now that I've... Hmm. Well, we can always adjust. We can always restamp this in places if we need to. I'm gonna clean up for that one. Oh, why? Look, I'm going to like this color. That's practically the same color. That's crazy. I didn't need to have cleaned. I hate wasting cleaning. Ooh, that, I really like that. Next one's blue. I don't think we need to clean again. I'm surprised at how many dark blues I have in these little mini pads. I highly recommend the mini pads over the full size pads. Um, actually in general, just because you you can get, look at how many we have on. If you're doing these layering designs, you're gonna have so many ink pads out and it can be very confusing. Oh, this is getting difficult to see. Oh, I lined up pretty well. I don't think I need to wash it between the purple either. And actually it might make the purple a little bit darker, which will be helpful on this shading layer. Oh no, who's gonna get this beautiful card? Because not I can't just give this to anybody because I've spent like three and a half days on it. Mmm, that's so pretty. Oh, I love it. Okay, now we're gonna go to a brown. What did I say I was gonna do for a brown? Espresso truffle. 
See, it can get confusing. Once you've got this many ink pads on your table, it can get very confusing. I can't wait to make this into a card. I'll spare you the gory details. I'll show you the pretty card at the end or on my blog or something. Okay, I hope this one's lined up because it's the bottom one. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so cute. The orange one needs to be a little bit darker, though. I think, what color is that? Ah. Red velvet? I don't know. That one, it looks like it might be a nice shadow. Ooh, what about this? I'm going to restamp that and Faded Brick by Gina K. I like these Gina K cubes. GNK also offers reinkers, so I would highly recommend you purchase. Well, if you don't purchase from a company that has reinkers, you can always buy reinkers from another company and just kind of get as close as you can for a match. Sorry about my head again. Oh, that's lined up. Oh, hey, not too shabby. Hey, that looks pretty good. You know what? I'm going to try that on the red one too, I think, because, oh wait, no, I've got a nice dark rhubarb stuff. This one might be, I don't feel like I have enough contrast there either, so we're gonna do that one again. Even doing the same color over and over again will give you a little bit darker of a color, so don't fret if you don't have this many inks, and I've been stamping for 20 years, so don't feel like, you know, you have to go and buy all this at once. And also, let's be completely frank and honest, I do get stuff for free because I have a YouTube channel. Hey, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Man, that's gorgeous. Oh, oh my gosh. I love it. Okay, that was worth the work. That was worth the like 25 hours I put into this card. <laughs> then I haven't even made the card yet. Oh, guys, so there you have it. <laughs> there you have it. Um, yeah, it's, it's so fun. It's fun to stamp. You just gotta find what's right for you whether they are looser to line up rubber images or they are more fiddly um, clear stamps, you'll find something for you. And no matter your budget, you know, I think I'm thinking this, this stamp set was smaller. I don't think this is as expensive as like the Amaryllis stamp set that I did. I can't remember right off the top of my head how much I paid for this, but um, I will try to link it down below along with everything else. One thing I noticed about the Amaryllis set, mine didn't have the little stamens in it and it wasn't printed on the sheet, but it shows it on the back. So I don't know if they like decided not to do that because like there's no stamens printed, but it could be, I think I might've got mine early because um, this was sent to me from Altenew and uh, as a, you know, uh, guest designer. So um so that could be why but like i didn't get that part in mind not that that would be a big deal to draw on with a pen that'd be no big deal at all but um yeah i really like those macaroons i love painting candy and all that stuff as well but yeah i'll make these stuff into cards or tags or something and probably share that maybe even at the end of the video who knows oh i want to stamp the sentiment here at the bottom i think i want to do this one that says in a cookie cutter world be a macaroon be a macaron Get your confections right, lady. I don't know if I, I like these blocks, but it can be very difficult to line up because you get distortion because uh, of the thickness of it. So let me go with one of these. And because I want to make sure I get a really good image, I think I will use my, um, my pigment ink. And who knows, maybe I'll even heat emboss it. That would be cute. Do you even care? Why are you watching this? This is like not exciting. You know what? I'm going to do this. I will show you the cards at some point. I hope you enjoy this. This was fun. That was fun. I really like that. That would make a cute bookmark. Oh, it's going to be a slimline card. I have this, uh, all my slimline card bases in here. I just, I'm trying to use up some paper that I don't really care for. <laughs> some cardstock that I don't really love. But uh, that will be really cute on there. Maybe I'll do a border. Who knows? But uh, but that's where, we're, that's where we're at. I don't know where we're going to end up. But that's all we really need to do in this video. It's more than we need to do. You've got a good synopsis over layering stamps and what type of materials work well with what. I also have a video on ink pads that goes over all the different types of ink pads and what works best for what and what paper to use and all that jazz. So, um, and like what you could color with different inks and um, what's compatible. So I will link that down below. You can check that out if you want more information that I want to try. And yes, I know I might be like messing up my entire thing here, but I kind of would like, because I, I stamped the sentiment and I embossed it, and I'm like, ooh, what if I 
stamp over all these with clear embossing powder and then heat emboss it. Wouldn't that be cute? So I'm hoping that's the case and we're going to give it a try. So let me grab, where's my little embossing pouch right here. We'll dust all this off. This is just cornstarch in a little cotton pouch that I sewed many, many years ago. And I'm going to use Versamark embossing ink and I'm just going to stamp over each of these. And I don't think I need to be too precise because it's just going to be clear. I'm just going to go over with clear powder. Oh, I think this is going to be so cute. Got to work kind of quick though because that first macaron might dry on me. I think this is going to be, because it's like, man, we spent so long on this. I like wanted to have a little pizzazz, you know, I don't want to look like I printed it. I mean, clearly it's not perfect enough to look like it was printed, but you know, I want it to look like super snazzy. All right. So let's sprinkle on some clear detail embossing powder. I actually could use a uh, like chunky stuff too. I think it might take a couple coats though. Get good and covered. I think this is gonna look great. Oh, it's it's sticking good, so that's good. Oh, I think that's gonna work out. And now I can see that I'm a little off on the edges there, but I don't think that's a big deal. So now we're just gonna heat this up and it will take a couple minutes. So we'll be back when this is completely heated. Guys, look at that. That was totally worth potentially ruining my project for it. Look at that. It's so glossy and beautiful. Oh, I love it. That's so pretty. When in doubt, give it a try. Even if you do risk. Well, you could always test it on a scrap piece of paper, but I was just going to go for it. I love it. Okay. Just had to share that with you because uh, I need, I would need some moral support if I really wrecked it. <laughs> Okay, I want to wrap up this video by sharing the cards that I made and kind of how I turned all of those examples that I showed you into finished cards. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I apologize for this video being like two and a half weeks long, but you know, that you get to see the, the reveal. So this was the macarons that we just stamped. I simply matted them, matted the panel on black and put it on a slimline card base. Um, I sh I've showed you in other videos. I just like pre-cut tons of card bases and put them in a bin and have them ready to go. Now on this one, I did the same thing pretty much I took the actually the dye based ink version of the silicone stamp I just thought the colors were really pretty I cut out the leaves from both of the flowers and then I also just stamped the leaves on a white panel and I double matted it or I matted it on green and then put it on a pink card base I think that is so pretty I just hand cut that banner out oops I smudged my ink a little bit when I was uh, when I was adhering it down but I think it looks fine and then, oh, this is one, I think this is one of my favorites here. So the two amaryllises that I stamped, one using the dye ink and one using the pigment ink, what I did was, I actually, I don't know if you can see behind there, but can you see that? I cut that uh, lighter shaded one, I cut that in half so I could kind of fool uh, and make it look like two little flowers back there. Because you know how amaryllis has like... Um, you know, often it'll be multi blooms blooming at once. And I just hand drew a stock out of a scrap. I keep my little scraps of um of cardstock here in my little card making card. I keep these little off cuts from cards and they are perfect for just a little um, stamping a uh, sentiment like I did there or uh, making like a stem or something I need to go with it. So I made a little Amarilla stock. This here is one of the rubber stamped layering stamps I showed in the video. And um, for the texture on this and some other ones I'm gonna show you, I simply took a big rubber stamp. I can just show it to you really quick. This one right here, I inked it up with Versamark powder, Versamark um, clear ink, and then I just put the image down, rubbed over the back so it would just give me a nice good impression because I didn't have a block this big. And then I used a cotton ball and some chalks and just pounced the chalk over where I wanted the design to be, where I wanted it to show up. And that way I didn't have to worry about not covering anything I didn't want to cover. And I really loved the way that turned out. I just tore, that was just kind of like a weird size. I couldn't cut it out to a square because I had another thing like right here. It was one of the, uh, well, it was one of these oval ones there, was right there, so I couldn't get a, a, uh, a clean rectangle, so I just tore it and hooked it onto this pattern paper and then just um, 
put it on a card base. I think it looks really cute. So I also use that chalking technique on the rest of these. Um, like I said, I just, I set this down on a mat, inked it up with clear ink, pressed my paper down onto it, and then just chalked where I wanted the, um, the image to be. And I've shown that in videos before. I'll try to link one up because I've used this technique a lot. Um, it's a technique is called Poppin' Pastels actually and it was something I learned at a Stampin' Up! party like a couple decades ago I think. So I just chalked around the poppies there so my image wouldn't be obscured. Same thing there, just added some string, some card stocks, easy peasy. This was some handmade paper I made a while back and um, I, I didn't really want to do much else because I thought that was really pretty and I didn't want to cover it up. And then this um, I used Oh, it was a bow bunny stamp that I recently purchased, and it was just a kind of a newsprint collage background. Added some postage stamp washi tape on there. I just thought that's really pretty, and it really went well with those colors. And then I did have one more just little circle, or just a little element that I die cut into an oval, because I had a lot of, remember that one where I did the rubber stamping? I had so many different examples on that page. I just didn't want them to go to waste. I figured tags, cards, something, they would be useful for something. And that's how I finished those up. I did want to show you really quick. Um, now I know these cards aren't really anything too, you know, spectacular. They're pretty quick and easy, but I wanted to share something with you that really um, helped helps when I want to do a batch of cards like this, like maybe I've just been playing with techniques so I have a ton of, um, I, you know, I've got a ton of stamp samples and I don't want them to go to waste. What I do, and I've shown, I have a video on how I made these, like I will take all my paper scraps, um, I took all my paper scraps ones, I just punched them, I tore them into different shapes, and I just glued them down onto scraps of paper and made backgrounds. And so I used up all of my paper scraps, they took up a humongous crate, and I basically got them down into, um, into little bins like this. So I took uh, I took cardstock and just collaged on them, made all those card backgrounds. They are four inches by five and a quarter, so they will layer on an A2 card base. And then everything else that I had that was um, like a scrap that was smaller than, than that. So my solid scraps, I first cut down to five, four inches by five and a quarter and just put them in here. And then I collaged, especially on the colors I didn't really like, I collaged with all my pattern paper scraps onto those. Cause like, you know, there's always those weird colors you have a million of like, kind of like this, kind of awful neon <laughs> pink. It's not a bad color, but it always seems like every paper pad would have that in it and it would be like, you'd have so much of it. So I used up the ones I had a ton of and made just plain backgrounds. And then for smaller scraps, I cut them down to three by four. And what I do with these is I will take a piece of washi tape and I will find one that matches a card and I will just take a little strip of washi tape and I will tape it inside and I will write on that so that can be removed and the recipient can reuse the card. So that's just something so that your cards don't get thrown away immediately. They can actually be used again before they are, um, you know, before they're tossed. And another thing that I do, and I needed a larger bin for this, and this is just, these are three for a dollar at Dollar Tree or maybe four for a dollar. I cut down um, a bunch of card bases at once, so I have them all ready to go when I, whenever I want to make a card. And I always have like extra gel printed bases, so I just, like anything I've started, I just throw them in there. And then when I have all those extra things that I've stamped and colored and, you know, just playing around with, I'll just make a batch of cards. And it's so quick and easy. And um, I hope that tip helps you. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was really long, but I hope you got some tips and tricks and learned some new techniques on how to use your stuff because, you know, we all have supplies, right? We all have supplies in our stash. We want to get more use out of them. We don't want to necessarily go buy every new thing that comes down the pike. And I hope this helps you put them to use and know what ink is going to work best on the type of stamps you have and know what stamps to choose when you are shopping. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this in-depth uh, stamp comparison, layering stamp extravaganza, and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.